So today I'm going to be showing off this new Pinsir Hines deck. Now this deck does use Astrakhan like most Pinsir decks running about at the moment do. However, we do not rely on it as our core win con as we do have the traditional fast Heinz backup plan of chucking out fast, cheap tanks as well as buffs to back them up. So our main Heinz elements for this deck are three Panzer 1Bs as well as two Panzer 3Fs as well as a Greif, which all combos together perfectly, especially the Panzer 3Fs Blitz ability, which it gives to all German tanks, allows your Panzer 1Bs to quickly print out an entire board of tanks just from a couple of cards in hand. We then have the pincer aspect of this deck where we use Astrakhan alongside cards like Jaeger, Stug and the new 101 infantry which all not only allow us to pop off with the Astrakhan but also synergize as well with the fast times package in the deck. To ensure that we can play all our 2 and 3 cost units on a timely curve we do have 4 copies of War Production which allow us to quickly pump out Astrakhans alongside a whole bunch of pincer buffs. While I'm not fully convinced that War Production is going to be the final version of Pinsir that finds a home in our meta, I do think it's a really enjoyable deck to run and it can punish some of the meta decks such as Frontline where you can trade very effectively in the early game and use cards like Marder to just generate so much card draw. Now I did play a huge number of games on this deck but I just picked my favourite 5 to show you and highlight the things I like so much about this deck. So here we are in the first match I wanted to showcase. Now we are up against another Germany deck. At this point I'd seen a fair amount of Germany control so I was going into this expecting that they were probably Germany control. The Wind, it's not too effective, it is good against Comet but it's not too good against this uh, this Germany control deck, it's more for things like Brit Air. So I thought we'd put back the Wind. we can go for the turn 1 Panzer B and then we can go for the turn 2 war production to push it up and dupe it. We can also go for the Panzer V and the 22nd on go 1. Now here I decided to not play the war production 22nd. I think this was a misplay. I think I should have played around careless talk and gone for the war production 22nd play. However, fortunately for us, our opponent is on what appears to be Heinz, so we're not going to be punished by not playing around with 22nd. We will flip our Panzer, produce a veteran variant. And then I decide it's going to be important to just flood the board, so we're just going to drop down both Panzers, and this will allow us to veteran another one next turn and deploy another one and just spam this front line. Deciding that board presence is more important than control in this moment. And our opponent just floods the board with one freeze. Which aren't able to trade particularly effectively into our front line. So we're going to flip another veteran unit. And then we're just going to drop another Panzer 1B. Now next turn we can flip another two veterans or we can move up, flip a veteran, play the 22nd. We've got a few different options in how we play the next turn. Our opponent goes for the Werble win trade. Deciding that front line is going to be the most important thing to hold on to this game, I decide just to flip both the Panzers into veteran. And I decide it's probably worth it just to push up the 554th. It can get traded away very easily, but there's not much to be gained from holding it back. So we're just going to move it up now and clog the front line as much as possible. Our opponent manages to get the second trade with the Werble Wind. And then has a few different options. They decide to wake up the Panzers and go for the trade. Now I decide if I go for the Stug Heavy Armor, it's going to be really difficult for them to take this front line. If they go for a 35T or another Whirlwind, it's not able to kill my Panzer in one hit, and we're able to trade freely into their back line. Deciding just to play both Panzers. Potentially I should have gone for the trade here, but I don't think it's too bad to put down the Panzers. We do risk being blown up by a Stars and Stripes, which it wouldn't be ludicrous to expect from our opponent. 
And there's the 35T. This heavy armor really coming into play as they're not able to trade efficiently. They put down the auto cannon. Now, I do want to go for the trade, but I do want to get the Marta draw first. And I decided to just continue to generate value via this Marta. Now our opponent is in a really, really bad position here, and we just we have so many avenues in how we're going to win this game, and they have so few ways out. They decide to bounce the Marta. I've got a big hand, which means I have a lot of options in how I want to take this turn. I decide to flip a veteran and to flip the other one as well. Put down both of those and establish just as much board presence as possible. Continue this frontline pressure. Now our opponent is able to do some fairly high value trading by trading the Panzer into our Stug. And then they are able to trade into this Panzer 1B with one health in the front line if they desire. Instead, they decide to go for the Hummel. Now, a neat thing is the 101 infantry do actually buff before attacking. So what we're able to do is put down two of them on the 101 and go for the trade. And we get a 4-4 tank before the trade happens. Now, looking back on this, I do believe I should have traded the 2-1 into the Panzer F to protect the 4-2 in the front line, especially because it had two pincers on it. It would have been very high value to keep alive. Just a little misplay there. My opponent does bounce one of them. And then goes for the naval bombardment on the one in the front line, bouncing it back to my hand. And trades out with the front line. Now I decide to flip these veteran tanks before emptying any hand space as I decide that the cards in my deck are higher value than the Panzer 1Bs and I have one left in my hand that I can use to generate more veterans. We're just going to move up and spam the front line as much as possible and put down the Marder so they're not able to trade effectively into my front line. Now my opponent has to figure out how to deal with this. Now it's reached the stage in the game where Leopold is a possible card that they may have, especially since we've seen some heavier bounce cards like the uh, like this Panzer IV and the Hummel. Now I decide to spam the front line. Flip the veteran, giving me another one to use. And I decide to go for the value trade, just to lessen the board state if they do play a Leopold. I don't think I should have played the first of first, I think I should have held that back. However, luckily for me, one of the 101s gets added back to my hand. What this is going to allow me to do is play the Whirlwind, put down both 101s, and go for the high value trade, trading the Whirlwind away. I would have been able to go for the kill anyway, even if I hadn't have gotten that back, because I do have this Panzer II. But it's just very neat to be able to put both of these down and be left with two fives. Two two fives left on the board. Opponent's going to go for the trade. Flip the Stuka, but is not able to get any kills with it. Now they do have to go for the attack for that to actually prop. So I'm going to go for a Marder. Thinking about going for the Grife, double trade into the Panzer F. 
We find a Panzer Free F. And this allows us to just go to town. Allows us to make another veteran tank here. It does lose the buff, but it's worth it. We are now able to just to start printing these out. Quickly fill the front line. And then I decide to go for the Jaeger cost reduction on the Panzer F to trade into this Stuka. Just make sure my opponent doesn't have any resources left. And then realizing there's nothing they can do, no possible outs. They just drop the Panzer IV. And send us a few emotes, not looking too happy about this. Just continue to spam out the emotes. And that is the first game. And here we are in the second match I want to showcase. Now once again we are up against Germany. I did face a lot of Germany in this session. Now I decided to put back two of the 554ths. Keeping one for the combo with the 22nd is really nice. And I decided to keep the Astrakhan. Unfortunately for us we find the second Astrakhan and the Marder. Now, we can potentially go for the turn 1 war production into 22nd and then 554 to the front line. But instead, I decide to pass back. My opponent puts down an Astrakhan, showing that they're on Pinsir. And then we go for the war production play on this turn. Putting down a 22nd, an Astrakhan and a 554, taking the front line and generating some draw. Our opponent can go for the high value trade here, but not going to be able to take the front line this turn. Now we have a few options. We can push the Astrakhan to the front line, but it does give our opponent the opportunity to buff their Astrakhan and get a high value trade into our one. So we instead just to put down the Stug and buff our Astrakhan, allowing our opponent to push the front line, but give us a high value trade in return. I do like saying the phrase high value trade today, apparently. Now they buff theirs, creating a 4-4. We have a few decisions to make. We could put down the Marder and go for the trade. However, if we do that, we're not able to take the front line. If instead we go for the Jaeger into the trade, push up, we now get some draw out of the 22nd anyway. And then we can take out their 22nd with the heavy armor. Our opponent puts down a second 101 infantry. It's the Stug, puts it down to one. And we find the Panzer Free F. I decide here to spam the front line. We don't worry about the Jaeger dying. It serves its purpose, which is to buff the Astrakhan. Now I decide to put down the Marder to generate some more draw. And we go for the trade on our turn so that they can't buff it with the attack and we can break the pincer. With a 6-6 six, six in the front line and a Marda in the back line along with a 22nd, the amount of value we're getting every turn is just so ridiculous it's going to be really difficult for our opponent to handle. They put down the third 101, go for the trade. Put down a Panzer 35T and trade it away which actually gives us some draw in the process. We're able to Stug buff and first o first buff. And our opponent scoops it up, realizing there's nothing they can do about that. And here we are in the third match I wanted to showcase, up against USA, which I'm expecting to be mid-range. 
We put back the Panzer as we have a strong turn one play with the wall production and unfortunately we do find the second wall production. Now we have a few options. We can go for a war production Heinkel plus Jaeger. We can go for a war production Werbel and Jaeger, or we can go for a Stug and just put down a free four. I decide I want the Stug pincer effect, so instead I'm going to go for the Werbel Wind and put the stats in the front line, expecting my opponent to be on a front line deck themselves. But much to our surprise, my opponent is on ramp. We find the third war production. We decide to, we decide just to go for the Heinkel here. To start generating these uh these spoils of wars. I am curious if I would have been better off going for the Stug instead. And our opponent plays their first ramp piece. I decide to go for the spoils. Buy myself a Jaeger regiment. And I just continue to beat down face. I do think it would have been worth it to go for the trade here and stop them going for the trade into my Jaeger, but I decided it's better to let them waste their credits and spend their turn doing so. Our opponent plays the Thunderbolt and passes back. Not sure why they didn't trade, I believe it was just a small misplay. I decide to, to heavy armor buff this infantry as it limits our opponent's trading options and then just continue to beat down face. Our opponent goes for the trade, heals themselves up for two. And this is why I wanted to showcase this match. This just shows that against slower decks, you can often just panzer rush them as if you are a traditional Heinz deck, and your opponents just can establish themselves before you're able to run them down. Realizing this, our opponent just scoops off the game. Four, we are once again up against Germany. And I wanted to pick this deck to show off the power of the 101 Infantry. I think it's a really, really potent card. We decide to keep the, the 554 plus the 22nd. We are going second against Germany, so countermeasures are a concern. However, finding the second 554th, we're able to push up both and go straight for the 22nd to start generating draw. You better get the value out of our board before the potential route out. Our opponent passes back, showing that they're probably on control. I put down the Astrocad and it does get killed by a From the Deep. However, we are able to go for a War Production plus Heinkel, but I decide to pass the turn back instead. Slightly risky because we could get another War Production out of the deck. But we have played two of them already, so it's fairly unlikely. Our opponent goes for the tactical strike, making me think that they don't have a route out. Unfortunately, we top deck the other war production. We go for the Heinkel draw. And we decide to go for the 554th, and we hold it back just in case they do have a route out, even though I'm suspecting they don't. Draw enough, our opponent passes the turn back to us. I'm not sure why I hit with the light infantry there, I believe it was a misplay. I should have checked for the, the countermeasure with the bomber instead. I decide to pass back the turn, saving the 554th to use in conjunction with the 22nd. But unfortunately it does get discarded by a case yellow. At this point, I'm feeling very confident. I decide to just generating as much card draw as possible. I take the 101 there. As unfortunately, the Astrakhan is not going to be of much use. And we do find the other 101 off the top as well. Now, this gives me a very nice position where I can buff this bomber and start to uh, start to beat down these guards via the bomber. I decided to just go for the Spores of War and take a Panzer 1B so we are able to print them because we have a Panzer F in hand.
our opponent goes for the trade to heal themselves up. And just plays a wolf pack, getting rid of the murder. And we play the second 101. Giving our hind call plus two plus two. And allowing us to trade very nicely into the guard. I decide to play the Panzer 2. Holding back the Panzer 1 so I could use it with the Panzer 3F for combo. However, we do find the second Panzer 1B. And our opponent makes a very questionable decision, deciding to kill one of the 101s instead of the Heinkel. Not sure why they did this. Now, I have a few different options here. I can play the Murder and just go for the trade. Generating some card draw. I consider going for the Panzer F and double trading with my units in the front line, which will allow me to hit face for even more damage. So I play the Jaeger. Double trade into the guard. Hit face for 5 damage. Put our opponent down to 7. And you see the, the buffs from this 101. Making a 5-6 hunt call. Our opponent gets a V1 flying bomb. However, it is not enough to save them. And once again, does not kill the Heinkel. Now, I think I've showcased what I love so much about this deck. You get high tempo and high stats on the board incredibly quickly. And I just find it so enjoyable just to overwhelm my opponent with Astrakhan and Panzer 1B in the same deck. Now, if you want to play this deck, there is a code in the description, or you can build your own version, which matches your playstyle and the collection that you have available at the moment. Be sure to like and subscribe and catch us in future videos for more cards and cards-based content with all your favorite content creators and personalities.